Great news! Critter Junction's game just got featured as Game of the Century on every app store. Let's look at how Critter Junction is going to handle all of this new traffic. Stay tuned. Critter Junction has done a lot of great work to be scalable, resilient, and highly available. But their traffic is set to increase exponentially and they're not sure their current infrastructure can meet those needs. The biggest problem is that Critter Junction's traffic has consistent spikes as people all over the world log on when they're in the mood to play with a virtual pet with their friends. To accommodate this traffic, Critter Junction allocated more resources, but was burning money during non-busy hours. Still, that was better than the alternative, risking service outages by not allocating enough resources. Luckily, when Critter Junction switched to a microservice architecture, they decided to host their application on Google Kubernetes Engine. And so they got to use two Kubernetes features that are designed to solve exactly this, horizontal pod and cluster auto-scaling. In Kubernetes, you can think of a pod as an application instance. It has one or more containers that are coupled together and treated as one unit. The horizontal pod auto-scaler automatically adds or removes pods based on the usage rate of your application. So if a lot of people are currently using your app and its computational needs go up, it'll add pods for you. And if that usage rate's dropped, then Autoscaler will automatically remove pods. This happens based on CPU and memory metrics by default, but it's also possible to use custom metrics. This is great for handling more requests when you have enough space to run more pods on, but if there's no space to run additional pods, then even if the horizontal pod Autoscaler wants to add more, it's out of luck. Unless you're using cluster Autoscaler. What this does is it adds more resources to your cluster, in this case machines, that pods can run on. We added these features to Critter Junction's architecture, which did help alleviate some of the problems. But as we researched more, we realized that in many cases, the application would run out of memory under a heavy load. And there wasn't a really good way to estimate how much memory was needed at any given time. So we took a different approach. Cluster autoscaler and horizontal pod autoscaling are both examples of horizontal scaling or scaling out, which means they focus on adding more total resources for the application to use as a whole. But sometimes it's necessary to scale vertically or scaling up by modifying the resources provision to an individual service, like if a pod doesn't have enough CPU or if it has too much RAM. That's where GKE's Vertical Pod Autoscaler comes in. Vertical Pod Autoscaler exists to automatically set up-to-date resource limits and requests for the containers in their pods. It can both downscale pods that are over-requesting resources and also upscale pods that are under-requesting resources based on their uses over time. This seemed like a good fit for Critter Junction's problem, so we helped them enable the vertical pod autoscaler on their cluster. Then, to get a good baseline for CPU and memory resources, we use vertical pod's autoscaler sizing recommendations by creating a vertical pod autoscaler whose update mode was set to off. Finally, we updated the deployment to account for these recommendations, and Critter Junction was able to run a lot more efficiently. Guessing what resources your app needs is tricky. But by leveraging horizontal and vertical autoscaling, Critter Junction was able to better manage their workloads, become more resilient, and save money on overallocating resources. All that was left to do was celebrate their well-earned traffic boost. So, that's a wrap for this episode of Season of Scale. Stay tuned to learn how Critter Junction continues to improve the design of their app architecture and dev processes. And remember, always be architecting.